everyone. How's it going? It's Sway Bay. And if you're watching this video, that means you know about Hearthstone's brand new game mode that came out one week ago today called Mercenaries. It feels like it's been so much longer than a week. We're going to talk about what bounties are, exactly what they can do for you. And if you haven't started playing yet, kind of what to expect if you've already started playing, bounties are still incredibly useful to you, even if you're focusing on PvP. Let's talk about what they can provide to you. So what exactly are bounties? Bounties are kind of the PvE aspect of mercenaries. You're facing AI and you take a team of six mercenaries of any combination of protectors, fighters, and casters, and you battle your way through a bounty map. When you beat the boss, you'll get some awesome prizes, but there are a few things to keep in mind that we'll cover. Throughout this video, I'll be referencing the first seven bounties that you come across, including the tutorial bounty. Let's head over to the Barons. To begin, let's talk about the five different things you're going to see on your bounty map, not including the campfire where you begin. You're going to see battles, which is most of what you'll see, right? They're going to be an image of an opponent and then some kind of marking with either the protector, caster, or fighter symbol on it. That'll give you an indication of what kind of battle you're going into. There are also epic battles, which look like the battle. However, they do have spikes on them, very similar to the boss battles. Next are boons. Oh, boons. <laughs> boons give one type of mercenary, whether they be protectors, fighters, or casters, some kind of bonus. Keep in mind that this is a symmetrical effect and will also affect your opponents. I do recall, and I will show you an instance of the first time I played a boon and realized that maybe it wasn't the best idea. You'll also be facing some spirit healers. Now, if your mercenaries die anytime along the map, they, they're gone for the rest of the time, unfortunately. However, if you run into a spirit healer, it will resurrect a mercenary. Keep in mind, if more than one die and you visit a spirit healer, it will only resurrect one and you don't get to choose which one. And finally, you're coming up on the mysteries. They're the little swirly things on the map. The mystery can be one of four things. The first thing is the spud, which... Uh, also, I have some, some fun clips of that one, but it is basically a hot potato that switches sides of the board every turn between your side and your opponent's side and will explode and do 30 damage to whatever side is on. You can use this to your advantage. There's also a blue portal, and that'll take you directly to your boss battle if you visit it. Another option that it could be is sabotage. Sabotage changes the types of every battle moving forward. So. It could be a fighter battle and it looks like a caster battle. It could be a caster battle. It looks like a protector battle. You have no idea what you're going into from that point on. And finally, this is the one that's most important, especially if you're someone that's playing PvE, that's kind of trying to level up, is the mysterious stranger. So you know you have your campfire, you have your tasks for the day. You accomplish those tasks, you don't get more tasks until the following day, right? wrong. You pick that mysterious stranger, you select the mercenary, and you get a new task just for that mercenary. So you don't have to wait until the following day. But keep in mind that if you don't have room at your campfire, you'll get a consolation prize, but it won't be anything like getting a task completed. Now, knowing all this information, how is this affected by the team that you brought? Well, for instance, I have a very beast heavy fighter team and that's not going to do too well against protectors because protectors deal critical to fighters. So in general, when I'm trying to go through a bounty with this team and level them up, I'm kind of trying to avoid facing as many protector battles as possible because I do have one protector and one caster on this particular team, but I mean, it's not going to hold up. And if I face several protector battles in a row, sure, I'll be able to heal myself. And if I'm a high enough level, I'll be OK. But it's not it's not an ideal situation. Now, what exactly do you earn? by playing bounties. The first thing, obviously, is that all of the mercenaries participating, even the ones on the bench, all gain level. So leveling up is important. Leveling up unlocks abilities. And experience is another thing that you gain at the end of that entire boss battle. And experience will help you level up those individual abilities as well. Now, coming back to what I mentioned about that mysterious stranger, those tasks, if you accomplish a certain amount of tasks, you will unlock equipment. 
Equipment is just that finishing touch on making your mercenary incredibly powerful. Okay, so now we're going to kind of break down the first six bounties. The reason that we're talking about the first six bounties is because everyone has to play them before they move on to PvP. From that point on, I feel like people choose different paths, whether it be focusing on PvP or continuing to move through the bounties or replaying some of the bounties with new teams. There's a lot of different directions to go, but everyone at least has to play these first six bounties. Some of these bounties teach a very similar lesson. Ferocious Quillbore and Apothecary Halbrim teach you that you cannot expect what your opponent is going to look like. For instance, when you're heading into the Ferocious Quillbore battle, you're expecting a fighter, right? All of a sudden you get in and there's a fighter and a caster. That's going to completely change your strategy in terms of what team you bring. Same thing with Apothecary Hellbrim. You see a caster, but then all of a sudden, flanking the caster is two massive protectors. In order to take everything down, you need a certain team. You're expecting to play fighters against a caster, but all of a sudden, your fighters are incredibly weak against the two protectors. Similarly, the Air Elemental, Serena Bloodfeather, and Sunwalker Proudhoof kind of teach you that you can't really just take all of your opponents out at once, right? You can't keep doing range damage that affects all of your opponents and slowly take them down because there are opportunities to heal and you see that these teams overall are stronger together than one by one. They're easier to take down if you completely remove an opponent and then completely remove another. In the instance of Serena Bloodfeather, if you leave Serena for last, Yes, she is strong, but they are way stronger together. And actually, speaking of Air Elemental, I just want to show you the effects of exactly what a boon can do for you. Typically, it's not too bad. Sometimes you boon and it's not even remotely affected by your opponents. You mostly just make yourself stronger and don't really affect your opponents. I took a caster boon the first time that I played this map. For to, you know, I was like, let's make some nice strong casters. Uh, lo and behold, the air elemental has two casters in the final battle. So just let's just let's just take a peek here at exactly uh, what I had to face. Like thankfully, <laughs> thankfully I won and, and I figured it out. But goodness me, I was not expecting that. So beware. <laughs> now let's talk about Kodo Bane really quickly because I feel like this is probably the most important bounty in which you are going to learn lessons. Kodo Bane's ability switches back and forth between dealing damage to opponents that haven't attacked yet and opponents that have already attacked. That being said, you need to watch your speed versus Kodo Bane's attack speed. Kodo Bane's ally can also slow down your mercenary, so that's something to consider as well in terms of who you want to take down first. Kodo Bane is not necessarily a threat. As long as you watch your speeds, you could even leave without taking any damage from Kodo Bane. And I think that's a really important lesson to learn in terms of your fights. You need to watch your speed, watch your opponent's speed, and see who's going to attack first. For instance, if someone can deal critical to you, and that mercenary is going to die, however, you attack them first, and they die, you won't take that critical damage, your mercenary will still be alive. And I think that this is something that Kodobane is such an important lesson for. Now, I know this video had a lot of information in it, so I hope that it helps you out. If you're brand new to Mercenaries, I hope it gives you an idea of exactly what you're going to face. And if you've already been playing, maybe you were like, oh, I didn't know that I learned that there. I totally did. Or that's how I level up. That's how I unlock my equipment. My name is Swaybe again. I stream on Twitch from Wednesday through Sunday at 5 p.m. Central Time. We stream mostly Battlegrounds and some Standard, as well as a little bit of Mercenaries. Thank you so much for watching this. Bye, everyone.